Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, I want to show you how to integrate Jira and ServiceNow, specifically agile development within ServiceNow. I get asked for this video constantly and I haven't made a how-to integration video, so this will be my first attempt. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start in Jira. I've got a project here called Jira Project Dash Utah. I'm assuming I'm going to make a new project for each release of ServiceNow as I keep this up to date. And it's got a board and everything, but very, very important. If you're going to do this, you need to know how I created this project. So this project was created with the Scrum template. Okay, so that that was step number one. And it's team managed, meaning uh, I'll hit use template here. It's a team managed project and not a company managed project, which you can see over here just next to my head. So that's a very big difference for those of you out there in the wild that might be trying to duplicate what I'm gonna do. I'm in a basically a free instance of Jira. I'm using a team managed project and the Scrum template, which you can see here up at the top. So that has very important implications for how this integrates down the road. Um, so if you're doing something different, you may wanna stop watching now and look for different instructions for a company managed instance or something that's not using the Scrum template. All right, now that we've got that out of the way, let's actually switch to ServiceNow and take a look at what we need to do there. So the first couple of steps um, you want to do is before we install the Atlassian Jira integration, we want to make sure our prerequisites are done. So number one would be making sure that Agile Development 2.0 is installed, which you can see here, I've got Agile Development 2.0 installed. The next thing you want to make sure is installed is the Jira spoke. So here I've got the Jira spoke version 4.2, which is installed. The next thing you want to check for is um, an authentication framework. So if you go to integrations dash, you'll see this integrations external authentication framework. So you want to make sure that that's installed and is running. Um, I noticed it says virtual agent there. That's why I was checking my notes to make sure I was looking at the right thing. But yeah, that's correct. So once all that's good, then you want to search for Atlassian and then Jira. And I'm just going to type in, well, I didn't spell Atlassian, right? That always happens when you hit record. Um, you make spelling mistakes. So Atlassian Jira integration for agile development. That means we're going to integrate Jira with the um, with the agile development side of service now. Now that doesn't mean we can't do incidents, problems, or change, other records, custom tables, stuff like that. I'll show all that in a future video. But right now we need to get this installed, which will automatically install the agile or Atlassian Jira integrations common. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna hit install, and there you see I get a prompt that we do have Agile installed, but it's also gonna install that Atlassian Jira integrations common plugin. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit install, and we'll fast forward through uh, the time thing here to show that this actually finishes and completes. All right, and it looks like that successfully installed. I'll put in post how long that actually took, but it was not quick. Um, I was working on my other screen doing other stuff. So that is the plugins that we need to install. So next we'll hop on to the next steps. All right, now that we've got everything installed, the next step we wanna do is go back to our documentation. So let's head back to ServiceNow, and I'm gonna follow this pretty much step by step. So if you need to reference this, this is gonna be your source of truth, and I'm gonna call out anything that varies. But the next thing we wanna do is actually connect the two systems together. And in order to do that, we need to set up credentials. Now I'm gonna tell you the biggest mistake people make is they go into Jira and they access their account and they go get an API key. I want you to not do that because then you're gonna be testing with your account and your account is the one doing the synchronization between the two systems and that creates all kinds of issues. What you wanna do um, from your project is you want to actually add another user. So I'm gonna actually manage um, my users in Jira and I'm gonna create a new user um, by adding them to my project. So I'm gonna invite a user and I've got a service account set up um, I created it in my 365 development instance. I'll show you right here so you're seeing everything that I'm doing. It's just a service account for Jira, Jira SN service account. I've already created that in 365 so that I can invite this user to my particular instance. So let's go ahead and put in that email address. Um, and I'm just going to leave the beginning of the email address and I'm going to block out my actual domain. Um, but it's just a 
on Microsoft domain. So nothing big, no big secret there if you're familiar with uh, Microsoft 365. I'm going to give them, for now, I'm going to give them basic, um, not trusted, or site administrator. I think I can get away with basic and then add them to the project. Um, but let's see here. Grant all access to your software, site admins, administrators. Yeah, I think I'm just going to leave them as Jira software. We can always change that permissions later if we run into issues. So we'll go ahead and invite them, and that should send them an email. And then I'll go over here and watch that email box and see if that invite comes through. There it is. It came through. They've been invited. So we're going to go ahead and join the team, and that should let us log in. And we'll put in a full name. We'll just call this Jira ServiceNow Service Account. And for, I'll use my other password I've got on my other screen over here. And sign up. And oh man, I hate these. Let's see. Bridges. Is that a bridge? No, that's a stairwell. Uh, bridge. Bridge. That's not a bridge. Is it a bridge? Can't tell. It looks like a bridge. No. And we're going to skip this stuff. And skip and skip setup. All right, so what I'm expecting to see is the projects that I have access to, and right now, okay, I don't have access to any projects, so that's expected. So let's go back to our Jira instance and uh, go back to the, our project and give this user actual access. So I'm gonna get out of my user administration, and now we're here, I'm gonna go to project settings and access, and I'm gonna go ahead and add that user, Jira, uh, add people, there we go. Should there, there's my Jira Service Now account, and um, add one person, and now they should be in there. So let's go back to my other browser and see if that project shows up. We'll just hit the refresh button here, and there we go. There's my Jira project. Okay, all right. So they have access. Let me get rid of this quick start here, and everything looks good. So that's the user I want to use. Um, in ServiceNow when I set them up. So let's go to ServiceNow and do that credential alias. So basically the instructions here are to um, open up the SN, the existing credential alias, and we're going to create basic authentication, authentication credentials. Now notice this procedure doesn't have much detail here, so this is where I'm going to have to add um, some, uh, some color to show you actually how to do this. So um, let's uh, go ahead and uh, get started with that. So what I'm going to do is pull up that connection and credential alias, and that will be, my goodness, right there under Integration Hub. And we should have one for Jira after installing everything, and we do. And I want to use this one, I believe, this sngira int.jira. Let's just confirm um, in our uh, documentation there that that's correct. So sngira int.jira, so that's the one we want to use. Uh, whenever these are available by default, you want to use those, otherwise you've got a bunch of extra work to do. So there is that one right there. And that's an alias, so we actually need to go ahead and create an actual connection and credential. And I've got a related link here um, to automatically do that. Sometimes there's a template there that'll let me do that. So um, in fact, I just noticed one thing here. Um, I'll point out that, that the the record and stuff like that is in a different application. I don't want to be in Employee Center, so I'm just going to get out of this one. I'm not necessarily going to go to Agile. I'm just going to go to Global, so that way any of my changes are going to be in the Global Scope. All right, now that I'm in Global Scope, let's go ahead and try this related link, see if it does what we want it to do. And I'm expecting to plug in my Jira instance details and create a new credential. Okay, so this sometimes happens. There's no configuration template, so that means we're going to have to do this on our own, which is fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and create this on our own. So um, I'm going to do uh, a new connection, and we'll just hit new here. That was right behind my head. Don't know if you saw that. And we're just going to call this um, Jira. Actually, you know what? Let me pull my Jira instance name uh, into that. So I've got JPU. For Jira Project Utah, that'll just make it relevant to that. So let's go back here, and we'll call this Jira um, JPU. And the connection URL, so I do need to pull that. We'll go ahead and grab that. I think I'm going to have that hidden on um, 
for you guys. So let me just, uh, how can I show you that? I'm gonna, sh oh, we'll see when I paste it in. So let me go ahead and paste that in. There you go. So that's, and actually I'm gonna have to blur some of that out because I don't want you messing with my, my uh, Jira instance, but that's the connection URL. And notice I'm linking to the, well, you can't because I'm going to blur this out, but I'm linking to the root of my JIRA instance. I'm not actually linking to the project just yet. Um, we'll take care of that when we set up a JIRA uh, instance later. And notice I don't have a credential, so we need to go ahead and provide a credential. So I'm going to hit the look up using list, and then we're going to create a new credential from here. And the new credential we want to create is a basic authentication credential, so basic auth credentials. And the name of that is going to be... Um, Jira service account. I'm just making that up. The username is going to be that uh, email address that I created in Office 365. That's how they're going to log in and uh, authenticate on Microsoft.com. And the password is the one that I created, um, but I'm going to actually use an API key. Uh, so let's go back to here. Uh, actually, I don't want to go back to there just yet. Let's go to Safari, and uh, for this user, I want to create uh, an API key. So let's see, manage account. Is that what I want? Security, API token. So we're going to create and manage an API token. Oh, this is a good one. This this burned a lot of people back in January. So they did change the size of their API tokens. They vary now. Um, that can be different sizes, so that will become an issue depending on what instance you're running uh, for service now. The field for those tokens may be too short and you may have to make it larger. So let's go ahead and try this out. Uh, we'll give this a label for service now Utah and create that. And now I've got that token. I'm going to put it over in my notes on the other screen. And it is a massive token, so it's huge. Um, Alright, so that's done there. Let's go back to uh, where we were setting that up. Okay, so I'm going to paste that token in there and hit submit. Okay, and see this is what I was talking about. So if you get this error message, uh, password value is too long and it can be truncated after encryption, please either reduce the password length or increase the field size. So that's what we need to do. We need to go increase that field size uh, for that one. So where we're going to do that is in this table right here. Discovery credentials is what the table we're going to have to go modify. So this is where we get a little bit off the path of doing an integration with Jira and have to do some service now work in order to make this work. So I'm going to again close this and let's uh, get off the path here and go ahead and modify that table. Yeah, we're going to leave without saving. I have to come back to that. There's the table, and since I'm an administrator, I can go in and configure this particular table. And what we want to modify is that default password length. I think it's probably set to 255 um, or something similar to that. Let's just take a look at password. Yeah, it's set to 255, and I'm in global scope, which is good. Let's just verify there. And I'm going to go ahead and increase that to 1,000 so I never have to worry about this again. Um, there we go. That change is made now. Uh, we'll just hit update on there to ensure that gets applied. And now I should be able to go and create that credential with that ridiculously long API key. And notice that I'm going through the effort to use an API key rather than just plug in my password. So to, again, best security practices here. Using a service account and using the API key where we can control access. All right, so let's use our history now and go back to um, our new record for a connection. And we'll paste in again uh, some of those details. What I call this Jira, uh, Jira JPU. And then I had my connection URL, paste, and for the credential. So let's go ahead and click new. We'll do basic auth credentials. And we'll call this Jira service account. And then I'll plug in my user ID again, which is my email address. All right, I'm gonna paste in my API token, and I shouldn't get that error message now, so we'll hit Submit, and it takes it perfect. So I've got my Jira service account, and uh, connection, and uh, the server version. We're just gonna leave the default there. It's set to eight. Um, I wouldn't change these unless you know something differently about your particular instance, and we'll go ahead and hit Submit on that. All right, so let's go back to our instructions there, 
and see what the next step is for connecting that. So we've created the connection and credential, or we have updated the connection and credential alias. We've created our basic auth connection credentials, and we've created an HTTPS connection. That's where we actually started was creating that connection. So next thing we need to do is um, actually create a Jira instance. So we're going to go to this menu item, uh, navigate to Agile Jira integration Jira instances, and I'm just copying that over to my notes on a different screen. But let's go ahead and do that. So Atlassian. Oh, where's a Jira? Let's just search for Jira. It's probably faster. All right, Jira instances. There we go, and we'll click New, and we'll call this. Uh, we'll keep the same name, Jira JPU, and we'll use that credential alias uh, for Jira that we just updated with our connection. So remember, it's the SN Jira int dot Jira, and uh, there's. Let's go ahead. That should pull the URL. Um, notice there's no field for the URL, but we have that HTTPS connection or HTTP connection. Uh, but we do need to select a version. So let's see what our options here are. Azure DevOps and Jira API. Obviously, we're doing Jira. Um, so let's go ahead and just save that. Rather than submit, submit would bring us to a new screen. Notice it did grab that URL. So it did point, bring that in from the connection. So we look good there. So the next step, I believe, before I hit connect, let's just make sure there's nothing else to do on that list of stuff. Um, yep, everything's good there. So the next thing to do is click connect. So this is the money maker. Are we actually going to make that connection? Did I screw up any of these steps? We'll find out here when I hit connect. All right, connection cannot be established. So that's uh, that's a problem, and I think connection failed. And I need to figure out what particularly failed. So it doesn't give me much details. Please check the system logs for details. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go check the system logs before um, they run out. I've got a favorite for the error logs, uh, which is basically a filter on the system logs to just show error messages. And hopefully we can see maybe I got put in the credentials wrong or something like that. Oh, goody. Uh, let's just search for Jira. Status code 403. And that was at uh, 1047. So let me try to see if there's anything surrounding that. 1047. So that should filter the log down to just the stuff that happened around that time, if I'm lucky here. And while we're doing that, let's just status code Jira 403. Let's see what 403 is. Forbidden. All right, so it's forbidden. And let's go back to while we're waiting on the error logs to show up here. Yeah, it's still running. Let's go back to the documentation, make sure I didn't skip anything or mess anything up. Uh, create an HTTPS connection. And let's go back to here. So what I'm gonna do now, um, in order while this error log is still trying to pull up, I, I suspect is, remember I made that Jira user um, just a regular Jira software user? Let's go ahead and elevate their permissions and um, let's see access and uh, we couldn't find anyone. Oh, let's get rid of that. I have two project roles aren't editable in Jira software free. Okay, so that means I need to mod modify them at a different level. So let's go to user management. Again, I'm not paying for this Jira instance, so it's a little bit wonky there. I've got my Jira service account user right there. So let's see if we can show details has access to Jira software and their basics. So I'm going to update them to, uh, let's see, can update product settings, add new products, and invite basic users to products, can administer your site, determine user access, and update billing details like you. So let's go one step up um, to trusted, and then we'll test the connection again and see if that works. I'm going to cancel this. Good. So I'm going to cancel that, and let's head back to our Jira instance and try connecting again. Connection successfully established. Okay, so it was a permissions issue on the Jira side. So I um, want to make sure that when you create that Jira user that they're at least a trusted user and that seemed to work. All right, so my next step then um, to get this running is let's hop over to our documentation again. Uh, discover and import Jira projects and boards. So we're just going to go ahead and click discover projects and that will run the job in the background to discover those. So there should be a button there. Yep, discover projects. So I'm going to click on that and that is going to start that import request and we can monitor that import request 
uh, down here and we'll just see that it's requested and we'll just quickly refresh this until we get to a state where it's discovered by projects. All right, so now, okay, so it's doing projects, boards, and then it's gonna go ahead and create the mapping. So again, a lot of automation here, automatically doing some of that for you. Let's hit refresh again. All right, all of them are completed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and refresh this entire form, and I should see all my JIRA projects, all my JIRA boards, and uh, some mappings for the company manage and team manage. All right, now that we have our JIRA instance actually connected, it's time to actually do the import and synchronization of different things. So if we look at the instructions here, we've connected it, we've discovered everything, and now we need to enable import and export of issues and import issues from JIRA to Agile development. So I want you to pay close attention to the order that I'm gonna do this. The first thing I'm gonna do in JIRA, I have nothing on my board, so I'm actually just gonna create an issue. Uh, let's go ahead here and we'll just start with a story type of task, or issue type of task, sorry, and this will be our first issue in JIRA, and we'll put a description of this was created in JIRA. And what I'm doing is I wanna make sure that when stuff starts synchronizing, I know where it came from, so I know where everything is passing, you know, going this direction, that direction correctly. So I've got something on my board now for uh, for issue to be visible. It must match your projects and filters, uh, which interesting. I thought it was to do. Let's just go to the backlog. There we go, there's my first issue in Jira. I don't need a Kanban board to manage that. Um, so that's a sprint. All I'm interested in is this backlog item right there. All right, so let's head back to service now and complete that configuration and mapping. Um, I'm interested in this instance or this project down here, Jira Project Utah. You can see it there, it's a team managed project. So I'm gonna open that up, Jira Project Utah. And we're gonna go ahead and do one thing. I'm gonna enable import and export. I'm gonna save this. And that's gonna be important for when we create the team integration settings here that I do want to um, do that import export. So let's go ahead and click new uh, for the team integration settings. And this is a really key concept is that you're gonna link that project to an assignment group in ServiceNow. So my JIRA board um, is obviously gonna be from that project, so the JPU board. Um, and then my assignment group, I have an assignment group called ServiceNow Sprinters um, that we're gonna use. That's actually what I've used in my Azure DevOps videos, and we're gonna use it here in my JIRA video. So there I've got it saved. Um, that's the assignment group. And now all I need to do is import issues. So I'm gonna click import, and that will create an import request. We can go back in time. I just created it, so really I'll need to go back to yesterday, and that'll be everything, and hit submit, and now that will connect and automatically bring in those um, that issue that I made. So let's just monitor the status of that here. Right now it's been requested, um, and it's importing the sprints. Um, I don't think I had a sprint, so this should be interesting. Um, probably too late to go create one. Uh, that's completed, now it's importing the issues. We'll just, that's processing, completed. All right, so we've got that completed here. So I should have some issues now inside of ServiceNow for the one that I created. So basically um, in table maps, that's if you're changing something like uh, a sprint, an epic, or a story, and you've got maybe some other field, you can go in here and you can actually change those, those mappings. So if you open here for a sprint, and you wanna change what fields get mapped from the sprint in JIRA to the sprint in ServiceNow, this is where you come do it at the uh, project level within the JIRA instance. All right, and there it is. You can see the external field names. This is the field names over at JIRA and the internal field names, the field names in ServiceNow. But let's get back to um, that import. Let's verify that that stuff came in like we were expecting. Um, there was my import sprints and issues. So I was looking at the um, ServiceNow sprinters team. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my Agile board. Um, actually, let's just go open stories. Um, Agile development stories, and I can sort on um, the ServiceNow Sprinters group. So we'll just show matching there. And what did I call that story over in uh, Jira? Let's go back to who I called that first issue in Jira is what we're looking for. And so I'm looking for first issue in Jira. I don't actually see it, so I don't know if that actually came through. Let's see here, what's going on, what's going on? Uh, let's go back to my JIRA instance, and I'm gonna open up that issues import. 
Ah, nothing came through. No issues. Um, everything, nothing failed. No errors, but nothing was imported um, like I wanted. So, let's go back to project. And, oh, <laughs> um, I created a task in Jira and um, I've only got uh, a mapping for story. So this is a good lesson. Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's let's keep it out of the box. I'm gonna change that to a story rather than in this video get tied up into creating another table and stuff like that. We could do that in a future video. In fact, I think I have another video on that. So I'm gonna go back to Jira and we're just gonna create a story instead of an issue. And actually, while we're here, we'll go ahead and create a sprint. Oh no, we already had a sprint, but now I got two sprints. Um, let's add some dates to this sprint. Um, we'll do this from the 26th and we'll make it a two week sprint through the 7th of July. And we'll include a goal there, but now I've got an actual sprint. Can I delete this one? Uh, delete sprint, there we go. All right, so now I've got a sprint. Let's go ahead and create an issue and we'll make sure this one is, I think that means story. Uh, if I change it, yeah, that's story, which is what I want. Uh, whoops, change that back to story. And we'll say second, uh, first story. We'll call it first story in Jira, enter. So I've got my first story in Jira created. Let's head back over to service now. And we'll do another import of issues and see if that actually brings it in. So we're gonna go to, again, we'll do the same date range that we did last time, submit. And we'll just wait for that to complete. And we'll actually check out, on this time, we'll check out the sprints, see if that actually imported anything. Okay, that did not import anything, um, but sprint one was actually already there, so maybe that makes sense. Um, and then the issues are processing now. Let's see if our story came over. Still processing, processing. Okay, there we go. Uh, completed, it found one and updated, and it didn't insert, it just updated, interesting. Um, okay, so let's go back to our stories for ServiceNow Sprinters. There we go, first story in Jira. It is there now, and let me open this story and see if uh, it has everything that I'm expecting. There's a description. Uh, we'll just put update from ServiceNow, and I'm going to save that. And what I'm interested in, is that export gonna be real time, or am I gonna have to do an import export? In the previous time that I've done this integration, those were real time, so let's go back to that other instance and see if it changes. We'll just move here, um, first story in Jira. Oops, I didn't mean to edit. Let's click on it. Yeah, it's not updating in real time. All right, so let's go back to setting up the integration to be import, schedule a job to auto import, uh, customize mapping and reset mapping. So it looks like there's no automatic jobs happening, no webhooks. So let's follow the instructions here to schedule a job to auto import issues. Um, it imports issues from all your projects which you selected the enable import option. If you not configure the schedule job, you must manually import issues for the discovered projects. Um, so we don't wanna do anything manual. So we're gonna go find that schedule job for import issue. Um, job. There's no export. That's interesting. Importing and exporting issues between Agile and Jira. Uh, All right, so let's just follow the instructions here. I'm going to head back to my instance and go to my schedule jobs. And system definition schedule jobs. And then what else did it say there? open the import Jira issue job. So I'm just gonna search on Jira then, see what else is there. Star Jira, import Jira issue. It is not active, so we need to get into that application. Atlassian Jira integration for agile development. There we go. And that'll let me update this job. Okay, so let's go ahead and activate that. And we will run this, um, hmm, I wanna, Daily? Is that, so default is daily. I'm gonna do it um, periodically every hour. And that should be sufficient for my purposes. Obviously your mileage may vary depending on when you need it. And I wanna go ahead and execute this um, to see if I get that update that I made to my story here. So if I go back to my story, 
where I added in there this uh, short description update from ServiceNow. I was expecting to see that in my Jira instance. So let's go, uh, we'll use our history and go back to the JP Jira project. And there's my import requests and has empty for the requested by, but it is completed. And it is just import, not export, even though I've got enable export checked. Uh, let's go see what happened. And go into Jira here. Ah, got it. So the import is an export. Um, so it got my update. And uh, that's interesting. So let's open that. And um, let's just add something else here. Uh, let's see, move my head out of the way. Uh, we will... And from Jira. And I want to do an assignment to Justin. Yeah, and then we'll save. Where's the save button? I haven't been in Jira for a minute. Um, that's no restrictions, visibility. Where's save? Is it just instantly saving? Yeah, I must be instantly saving everything. Okay. So there's my first issue, there's my first story that's been updated, and I'm an assignee in there. So let's go back to my environment here. Let's check out that story. I don't think it's gonna update by itself. Um, I hope it did, look at that, and from Jira. So there's a webhook established that I didn't see, and now the assigned to got updated. So um, I remember in the other video I had to do points. I'm not sure if points are still not set up, so let's just double check that really quick. Um, we'll go back to our field mappings. Jira, we were in the Jira project, and table maps, and story is what we have mapped, so let's open that one up. I got sprint, or no, it's sprint epic assigned to, short description, description, and state uh, are we in what's synced. So um, if I wanted to do the, um, if I wanted to do the points, I could add that points here, but let's just, let's just check something else out. Let's do the description and that I'll, I'll feel like this integration is good if the description comes across. So we'll go back to our story and we'll add into the description. Now I am testing description. And my head's on the way, that's good. And we'll save that. And we'll head back over to Jira. And we will just click on this one, click on that one. And there it is. Now I am testing description, it came right on through. And I'll update it here. Um, we'll just say, this is a pretty good test, exclamation. Looks like it is bi-directional. And the integration is done, for my purposes, of showing you how to set up this integration. So let's head back to ServiceNow. And look at that, updated without me even refreshing the page. This is a pretty good test. Looks like it's a bi-directional integration, and the integration is done. So that's it. I did the Jira integration step-by-step, step, and hopefully you saw there that there's some steps that are not complete or not detailed, and you saw me work through those permissions and completing things that are not exactly outlined. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who's in interested in integrating Jira in ServiceNow. And that's just the base layer. There's lots you can do on top of that. Um, I have some other videos. We'll link to them up above about uh, putting the stuff in the backlog and getting incidents and other stuff into uh, Jira from ServiceNow. So it's not just a story to story integration. You can do a lot more. So definitely check out those other videos. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.